Mr. McLeod? Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me, Mr. McLeod? Hello, yeah, who's that? My name is Ian Walway. I'm calling from the Safeguarding Adults Team, Devon County Council. Hi, Ian. Thanks for calling me. Um, I'm a little concerned with the letter that she has come through to us as an email. Uh, yeah, and I've got an email through from you just now um, using a site called Egress, um, which I'm not familiar yeah. with. I didn't want to download it. It looked a little bit strange. Um, some of the no, it's what we use for secure seen... communication. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about who you are and, and where you are in? What's your role? What do you do? I'm a safeguarding adults team member. I work for Devon County Council, and we are the people that triage all the information relating to individuals in the, car in the South Devon area. Right, OK. Um, well, where are you based? Uh, we're based in Newton Abbott. So you're at an office over in Newton Abbott at the moment? Y yes. OK, great. So you received... What I need to know is whether inquiry. or not you've got consent from uh, your brother to give us any of this information. I do, yes. Right, OK. Uh, you told him you were going to pass it all over to social services? Uh, yeah, I've said I'm going to report it, yeah. But did he consent to that? He did, yeah. Okay. Um, I believe that there are some voice recordings there. Was he made aware that voice recordings were being made yeah, at the he, time they were being made? He is, he is aware, yeah. We've had extensive conversations about it. I've literally just okay. uploaded um, all of the calls from 2015. Um, I've but we, we only deal with things that have happened immediately. So what has he been a victim of now and why has he not done something about it? He's been the victim of uh, extensive assaults and abuse, and unfortunately he's been in a position where um, he's been threatened into um, a, a state of silence over it. He's not able to, to speak out because he's been um, physically assaulted and taken from his home on several occasions um, to, to other places where he's been extremely poorly treated. Um, he's had a couple of visits to hospital um, and he's not able to, to contact the police or the security services regarding it at present, unfortunately. So um, what are his care, main care and support needs? Um, I'm, I was kind of not familiar on that. It seemed a little bit of a grey area. I was looking at um, raising a concern for his welfare, but um, he he doesn't have any immediate care and support needs. Um, I wasn't aware... Well, he can't be the victim of a safeguarding. This was the thing. Once I once I went through um, the, the the forms and stuff, I realised that um, it, I mean, on the, I went through Bristol County Council and also through Devon County Council, and what I became aware of, um, Bristol site is much more about raising uh, concern for kind of anybody, um, whereas on the Devon site, and um, it does, it wasn't until I kind of um, I just googled kind of a report, a, a, you know, concern for safe safeguarding for mm. an adult rather than a child. Um, but I wasn't aware that it was sort of determined specifically towards vulnerable adults rather than um, adults with a, 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 an immediate concern for their welfare. I mean, you've got charities like uh, the Modern Slavery Helpline and Unseen.org um, who work to, yeah. to, to tackle modern slavery, which um, is kind of more similar contextually to the types of um, abuse and threats um, and violence that yeah. have suffered have been, have been sort of long term. Um, related to kind of gang violence and... Um, and have you reported this to the police? Um, I have um, spoken to police and several um, people within the NHS regarding this. Um, but it's been and what for police said to you? Unfortunately, there, haven't, uh, there hasn't been a very sort of joined up approach regarding that. Um, it's something which uh, needs to be evidenced and something which needs to um, very much, they, they need to have a fact base. Uh, narrative to be able to work on and to be able to get budget to, to move to um, to take somebody into protective custody yeah, or anything like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, before, we get to, before we get to all of that, what have the police said to you when you said that you believe that your brother's been physically attacked? What have they done then? Uh, they said they were going to look into it. But okay, really, and, I, and I think, I, I believe that they spoke to him. Um, I believe I spoke yeah. to some police um, uh, quite, it was a bit of a scene where I spoke to some police that became quite desperate at the end of 2018. Um, and I believe they did they did phone him up, phone him up and speak to him. Um, and I'm okay. pretty sure at that point he may have been honest with them. Um, but he's very, very cagey about giving out details. And it's something which he's he's very, very fearful um, for his well-being and for his life in terms of being honest and open with people. And something which causes him quite a great deal of um, sort of trepidation and anxiety. Um, and it's something okay, so the, the place that he lives in at the moment, 
Is it somewhere that he owns or somewhere that he rents? It's rented accommodation. It's, it's, and it's who is the address. landlord? Uh, it is Gough Quarters. Right, so it's not like Teen Housing or Western no, no, Housing. Or no, he lives. It's he, not Housing Association. No, no, his housing, his okay. housing is in uh, is in Bristol at present. He's in Bristol. Well, he is, but he's been he's he's lived in Devon uh, historically, and he is in Devon quite a lot, of the time, a lot of the time. Where he is, where where, where he's being kept um, is is a, is a property in Devon. Um, he's also been on site um, at a couple of uh, hospitals as well, uh, where he's been being uh, abused and, and has been kept there, um, which have both been inside Devon County District. Um, very often, he is in Devon County District, although he has an official rented property in Bristol. Um, I reported his concerns to both Bristol City Council and to Devon County Council because regionally he is um, very often in between both those two places. Um, and okay, so um, for, for us to get involved, we need to speak to him, we need his consent, we need the incident to be specific, so yeah. a date, a time, a place, okay. and what happened to him, and it needs to happen in Devon and be recent for us to investigate anything historic we wouldn't get involved with because we are for protecting people in the here and now. Yeah, so if he's, somebody's he's been still, abused today, we current. need to do something tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this, this is very much an urgent situation and he certainly is uh, currently at risk. It's something which... Um, but if he's in Bristol, it's nothing to do with Devon County Council. I've got reason to believe he's in Devon at the moment. Um, I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very sure of that, in fact. Um, well, then he needs to contact us. If he, if he tries to contact you or he gets seen trying to contact you, um, I mean, by all means, you can try to phone his mobile telephone, but he's, he's with uh, people who are, who are present at all times, um, and it's not a conversation which is going to be very easy for him to have. Um, I would probably go as far as to say it would probably be... It could be to his detriment, but I appreciate this is something which... I do, I do understand that. We wouldn't how, want how your framework exists, and I understand that, you know... Yeah, we wouldn't want it. We wouldn't want the best thing you can do. Well, I mean, at the same time, I understand that, you know, making a phone call, if you timed it right, and he was he was in a place where he could talk, then I'm sure he would be able, you know, it would be a, an incredibly valuable thing. But, but um, I, think, I think what you need to do first is you need to do this to the police. If you believe that he is in risk of immediate danger of life... You need to phone 999 and speak to the police. If he isn't, and he's got care and support needs, and he wants Devon County Council to help us, to help him, then he can phone Devon County Council, um, and I will give you the telephone number. It's 01392 38 and option 5. And that will get him directly through to the safeguarding team. Okay, so he's not in a position where he's able to call the safeguarding team. Then you need to phone 999 and give the police all the information you have about his whereabouts. We are not an emergency service. We do not go in and intervene in an emergency way. We work with people on a planned response to reduce or eliminate risk for them in the future. If you believe he's the subject of modern slavery, violent and aggression, drug use, or county lines, we would automatically make that referral to the police. We would not deal with it until they had finished their investigations. So um, all I of would this say, information I would needs say, to go to the police. I would say I'll uh, put, put in a call to him. I mean, it's better than not doing it. It could, it could put him in detriment, but the police, unfortunately, I'm not in a position where I'm able to contact the police in the moment. I don't even have consent to, to phone him. I don't have consent well, have to have consent the information. To phone him. I mean, that's not... I mean, you, you, I've given you that consent. I mean, you know, no, no one has consent to phone anybody until they pick up the phone. You know, it's, it's a tacit consent. It's a telephone, you know. Um, but if someone doesn't want to speak to somebody, they can end the call, and which is almost certainly what yeah. he would do. But... What I will tell you, Mr. McLeod, is at the end of this call, I will be phoning the police and passing the information to them because this is a police matter. It's not something the Devon County Council would get involved with at this stage. It may be in the future, but from the information you've provided me with so far, this is something for the police, and I will be forwarding this information to the police because they are best placed to deal with it. Um, I, I think that would be valuable, and I, would, and I think that would be, that'd be a wise course of action. I would suggest also speaking to him... Um, as well, because in the event
and like I say, we hand we hand all this information to the police, and we take second place. We once we refer to the police, we hold back and wait for them to tell us what they want us to do next. We don't interfere in their investigation because it could muddy the water. Like you say, it could jeopardise him or put him at in increased risk, and we don't want to be seen to be trying to do anything like that. So, so our course of action was concerned about his consent. You said that you didn't have consent to find him. How, how does that sort of we, play out? Well, normally, normally we would have information either in writing or the person themselves would have phoned us and said that they're happy for to talk to different county council. We don't initiate calls. We certainly don't initiate calls to people who may be in a, in a degree of difficulty or worse. Uh, we would automatically contact the police. But we normally would like to know their whereabouts and uh, where they're likely to be over the next couple of hours so that we can get to see them or the police can get to see them. OK, so if somebody's made a report for a third party um, who's who's being abused and you know they, they, they don't want to speak out or they're kind of like in a position where they don't feel able to speak out, would you not, would you not then phone that person? I mean, if, it, if it's not a situation where, um, you know, if, if somebody has gone to somebody else and said, can you please report this, and they've said OK, and they're acting as an advocate on their behalf as a representative... We, we, would, we would do so. We would do so if we believed that they were not in immediate risk of harm. If, as you've said, he's likely to be in immediate risk of harm, we would do the police first. Realistically, if all this I'm was something about, that... Um, sorry, remind if, me of your yeah. name again, mate. My name is Ian Woolway. I'm the social care assessor at the Safeguarding Team. How do I spell Woolway, Ian? W-O-O-L-W-A-Y. OK. Um, Ian, what I'm concerned about is that effectively, in real terms, the workflow and the end game of what your um, sort of strategy is is probably going to be academic in as much as if you phoned him and it wasn't a good time for him to speak or he was with somebody who was present um, and, and didn't want him to report um, what had happened to him, then it would be as simple as him saying, I don't know what you're talking about, you know, this is just my brother being worried, uh, there's nothing going on and, and, and ending the call. If you then refer, if you forward these details onto Devon and Cornwall Police um, and they assess the evidence, which um, I'm assuming you've got that Google Drive folder. Have you? Have you, have you, have you I guess you I have. I'm not opening it. I'm not opening it because it's not something that we do. It's, we don't go into that. Well, you said there's audio files there, or it just. No, I, I said I, I that there was something. That said there was audio files because you said you said there was audio files there. Okay, so you've not reviewed any of the evidence. No, because it's not for us to do that. That's, that's a police matter. Um, we would, if he was, if so, for instance, so he wouldn't be care home. to do that in, in, in like preemptively before you phoned, phoned me, or if I mean, there is a crime or a potential for a crime, first of all, I phone up to see if I could gain consent. Yeah. And if you had consent to call us, and then to find out what actions you've taken with regard to the police. This is from what I've seen uh, so far. Information that would be given to the police for them to lead an inquiry if they felt something or someone was at risk. If this, if your brother was in a situation like he was in uh, some form of care home and they weren't giving him his medication on time or something like that, that's abuse and that's the sort of thing that we as the safeguarding team would be looking into. When something comes to the likes of county lines, drug abuse, modern slavery, it's straight to the police. We don't, we don't get involved in that. That's not our remit. OK, so um, if you're going to forward it onto the police, all I'm suggesting is that in terms of um, the end product, what's going to happen very likely is that hopefully they will review the evidence and then probably put a phone call into him. It's going to be very difficult for them to trace his location at present without phoning him. Um, and there's every possibility that, you know, I guess, you know, hypothetically after that that he may give a false location but what i'm suggesting is that whether you phone him or the police phone him basically what's going to happen is that he's going to receive a phone call now that can work in either one of two ways it could be um, a real lifeline and it could put him in touch with somebody where he can say yes i'm at this place i need to speak to somebody right now you know I've, i can you know i can tell you a hundred hundred horrible things that happened to me in the last two years and i can give you names and dates and faces and information and it's all correlated with this um drive folder that i've provided with you or alternatively he'll say no i can't talk to you i don't know what you're talking about nothing going on um but that's going to be the same whether you phone him or whether the oh. police phone him basically is, is, is what i'm but saying because of the and, gravity and works on because the of the gravity of the allegation we have a duty to report this to the police, and this is not within the remit of the Devon County Council, so we automatically report these issues to the police. We don't deal with them ourselves. 
okay, that's fine. I mean, you know, there, there definitely is a criminal element, and I definitely think that, um, you know, cert- certainly there is. Um, and if he's at risk, they are the best people to go in and extract him. Yeah, that's correct. But it's just um, all, all I'm suggesting is that if you if you could speak to him uh, first, and then if he tells you what's happened, then forward it onto the police with uh, details. That might be better than um, it going to police. What I'm conscious is that, is that the, the evidence I put together, some of it um, is, is is narrated, and I've extracted some of the more relevant points. But it is potentially quite time consuming, and um, there is some fairly immediate evidence which is uh, which is conclusive and undeniable. And, and I'm certain that um, somebody who has got experience or you know the right sort of professional attitude will be able to identify that very quickly, and we'll see that there's there's a, you know a huge body of evidence there, and actually that um, it's a very very serious situation. And I'm also certain that there will be record um, with health and social care side of things. Um, he had some engagement with the depression and anxiety service um, in 2015, 2016, 2017. Um, he's also had um, various visits to hospital, which again will be linked with uh, local authority healthcare records and um, things which probably from your perspective from within inside the local authority you've got better access to database management and um, correlation of sort of facts and dates and times to be able to if you can speak to him it's a bit of a punt and it is you know i don't i don't know how much realistically it doesn't put him in any more danger than when i phone him if i phone him and say where are you mate are you okay and he's actually sat in a house full of people um who you know are being very very nasty to him and he doesn't you know and he's saying that he's at home or he's at work and he's not there it's no more difficult for him to lie to you than it is to lie to me. But in terms of your workflow and your capacity for outreach and collation of information as a local authority employee, if he says, yes, you know, this, 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 and this, and this has happened, you can probably then collate that information, add that to the Google Drive um, documents that I've collated, and then forward that onto the police with um, already some substantiated workflow and a little bit of backstory, rather than um, them looking at it and saying, well, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff here that suggests this young man might be uh, might have been being you know badly assaulted or abused um but then they're going to have to work through that and then from the evidence presented within the files then work backwards through the local authority to assess things like health and social care records um i think that if you i think and i know that as, a, as somebody who's safeguarding vulnerable adults certainly if you're working within um the local authority and, and social, social services sort of records and database administration administration protocol, you're going to have access to um, things like, you know, as you say, if somebody was in a care home or if they were, you know, maybe an older person uh, and they were being abused or neglected, um, you'd be able to identify, you know, all that person's case notes and history, um, all of their engagement with social services and local authority um, systems because you've, you've, you've got access to that in a slightly more direct way than um, obviously the police are ultimately, you know, a, a detective inspector or uh, somebody higher or, you know, or, or a sergeant potentially, you know, they, they have um, extensive access to some files and records, but at the same time it is ultimately limited and their investigation first of all has to be justified and then has to be carried out. And what I'm conscious of is that if, he, if you speak to him, there's a pos- if, if he says no, you know, the idea of that, the prospect that it puts him in danger is, is a prospect. If they, if they think it's been reported and they're worried, I mean, these people, people involved could go to prison for life for what they've done to him. I mean, it's very, very serious indeed. Um, I, that's not really my ideal solution, but I just, I, I really want him uh, to be safe. And uh, what's happened is extremely serious and very, very relevant in terms of sort of the legal, legal and um, very much his, his well-being kind of perspective but um what i'm thinking is that if you put a call into him and it you know it's a bit of a gamble it's 50 50 really but if you speak to him and he's at a time where he happens to be unattended or he's able to speak to somebody um and he can say yes this is this 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 and this happened i went to hospital on this date with this injury as a result of of, of these guys and you know i went i was here at this time and, and and i spoke with these people um he can also probably give you dates the time when he has spoken to the police um when I did report, I've, I've once raised a concern with the police at the end of 2018, very prominently, um, and he was present at the time. I believe they did speak to him on the phone for sort of 30 or 40 minutes, um, and there was no investigation which formally, as far as I'm aware, was launched as a result of that. But I think he was probably open and honest with them on that occasion. Um, and I, I, I just think that from your perspective as a local authority employee, as, as somebody within the council, if from your perspective somebody tells you whether they're somebody with uh, vulnerable social care needs or not i think that probably 
your scope for, for, for research and referencing information, which will be extremely valuable to the police. It's going to be a lot more privileged than theirs because they're going to, you know, if, if they phone him, if you phone him and he doesn't answer or he puts the phone down and you refer it to the police, they're going to have to look backwards and probably end up delving into your records. But if you phone him and he picks up and he gives you a five-minute conversation, you can then get a whole load of really valuable information to then pass it on to the police. So as a kind of flow chart way of doing things if you if you try to phone him and he and you can't get hold of him or or whatever that's fine then refer it on to the police but if you try to phone him and he then picks up that would be really valuable and it would be it would seem silly for you not to do that because from your perspective from within devon county council you will have access to a whole load more information and verifiable records which will be extremely valuable for the police and their investigation will save them a whole lot of time a whole lot of legwork and will create a much clearer picture um, specifically access to health and social care records um, and access to um, his, I don't know how much, his housing, his, his benefit records or his or his records of um, Department of Work and Pensions are definitely relevant um, to his situation. But more than anything, it's, uh, I think, the engagement with depression and anxiety service, um, times and dates of those, um, GP appointments, things like his... Um, Mr. McLeod, I'm going to have to stop you there because um, I've got other calls coming in that I do need to take care of. I appreciate your concern. I will do the things that I said that I was going to do, um, which are terms and conditions that we have to abide by by the CARE Act as imposed by government. And I will inform as many people as I can about the situation. And no doubt at some point in the future, somebody may come back to you. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to go now because I do have another call coming in. And I do know that I'm expecting quite an urgent call as well. But okay, I do so thank you for your time. Um, and so I will get somebody to get in touch or not. I'm going to talk to my social work colleagues and I will act on their advice. All right? Okay, so I'd like thank that you, you very much for... Well, you asked me initially if, 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 you have, if I had consent. And you I know, I know, but that, Baird, that, that considering, considering the information that you've now passed on to me, I'm going to discuss it with my social work colleague who is my senior and I will find out which is the most appropriate form of action to take could and you, somebody will be in touch with you once we've got some information. Okay, could you give me their contact details, please? Because I'd really like to follow the no, we don't, authority. We don't, we don't give out that detail. We only give out our main telephone number, which is 01392 yeah. 381211. Yeah. Okay, and you're based over at Newton Abbott? Yes, we are. Is that over at Ford House? We don't disclose the location, but we are in Newton Abbott. Okay, fine. Um, Okie doke. So you're going to refer that on to your manager and and to the police, yes? That is my intention. Okay. Can I? Will I? Will I, will I get any workflow or information with the report that you made from the police? Could I? Get I that's up to the people I pass it on to because I'm on I'm on the duty desk, so I pass okay. it on. It's up to others then to follow it through. Okay. But okay. I will pass on your details. Okay. So if they do make All a right. crime report and pass them over my information, surely at that point then I would be entitled to information related to that. You're not entitled to any information held by social services or any of the work that we follow up. Well, if I if you make a crime report that I've alleged something. Um, surely then I would be entitled to, to, to details of that crime report. I mean, it would be very valuable for oh, me because oh. I can then liaise with the police and work forward and help them with their investigation, you know. Yeah. Well, what, what you do, I'm afraid I really do have to go, but I will speak to you again or somebody well, will really, contact really you. it's a really, important point. I mean, I, 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 value yeah. the, I value your time and your consideration, and if you could if you yeah. could report this to the police, that would be extremely valuable to me. But what I'm suggesting is that if you could um, fill me in on the details of any police report so that I can then update them and, and liaise with them going forward, that would be really valuable. Can you find out if like you're say, I cannot that? comment. I cannot comment on any files we hold on your brother. I cannot pass on any information we have on your brother. And I cannot tell you what the police hold about your brother. That is not something that's within that's our remit. not what I'm asking you to do. If you intend to make a police report, then... And, and you're intending to make a re police report based on information I've given you with my personal details and my brother's, then as a, social, as, a, as a local authority employee, then you wouldn't be breaching data protection by giving me the details of the report. So if you make a report, you will get a crime reference. Well, I'm, tell I'm telling you now... Hat, that would be really valuable. I'm telling you now that I will be contacting the police, and the police will contact you, and they can then give you some information should they need to do it. But I'm afraid I do have to go. And thank you very much for the call. Bye-bye now. Brody, it's Carly Stanton from the Safeguarding Adult Team at Devon County Council. Hello. Hello. 
Um, I believe you spoke to my colleague earlier on duty, and he's just spoken to me about the safeguarding referral that you've raised for Connor. That's right. Can you hear me okay? I can, yeah. It's not a great time for me yeah. to talk right now. This is an urgent issue, but um, oh, okay. I'm literally a little bit compromised. Can I get a contact number to call you back, please? Yeah, that's sure. If you, what I'll do then is I'll try calling you about half an hour. What's, your, okay? what's your number? So it's 01392. Yeah. 38 Okay. And what's your full name, please? So it's Carly Stanton. Okay. And where are you based? It's Devon County Council Safeguarding Team. And, and where is that? Which where, where are you located? It's in Newton Abbott. Okay, great. Um, I will give you a call back in uh, literally sort of 20 minutes. Is that okay? Okay, then. Thank Brilliant. you. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye.